As most of you would know, Instagram, um, aka Meta, announced and launched Threads, which I spoke about before on the podcast. And essentially, it was billed as the t Twitter killer, where basically Instagram were creating their own version of Twitter. And it was an interesting thing to do because I feel like the timing was expertly done because I feel like it was announced a while ago, but I feel like they pushed it a bit forward or rushed it to kind of get launched because of all the shenanigans happening over on Twitter where Elon is basically throwing loads of stuff at the wall, trying to see what sticks. But obviously it's all happening in real time. Plus he's also not the most likable person in the world. So people are a little bit angsty about Twitter. So they're jumping on Blue Sky. They're going on that other app. I forgot what it's called. I think it's called like Spill. That's meant to be like the black Twitter version of Twitter and shit. Everyone's kind of trying to find a place that they can go to that they can kind of get their tweets off that isn't Twitter. And then I think Instagram did a really good thing because I've always thought to myself, because I jumped on Twitter so late, I know that I'm not unique in that. I know there are some people out there that have Instagrams and have no no interest in having a Twitter whatsoever because I was like that for a while. I didn't even have one to browse on. I remember, I think I had one as like a feed that I used to kind of just push out my, you know, podcast episodes and shit, but I didn't really engage in it in the slightest whatsoever. And I know a lot of people do the same thing. So it was very smart of Twitter, sort of Instagram, to develop their own Twitter-like platform because they know they've got a lot of users on the app specifically who would never sign up with Twitter anyway, which is probably why that app little update thing that I saw that I thought was terrible, that one where if you go on your DMs, there's like this little status update thing where people can write little things. I don't know what people write on there. They're fucking dear diary thoughts. Who gives a fuck? But people like, you know, think everyone gives a shit about what they have to say. But those things are really popular. Like if I go on my DMs now, I can see loads of people that I follow who have updates on their statuses and shit. So clearly it's something that a lot of people did. So I think they recognized it, saw the gap in the market and capitalized on it. And then they rushed it forward or brought it forward the release date and now everyone's jumped on it. The one thing I've noticed straight away, though, looking at the app, just in terms of, um, you know, uh, what, how do you call it? In terms of how it just looks, right? It's very well done. It's a very beautifully designed, I have to say that. Um, it kind of gives me the idea of, like, your standard Instagram square, but then imagine the square that you usually put your pictures or your videos or your reels is now just a place where you write your tweets kind of thing. And then the comments are essentially thread replies you know on the twitter that's basically how it looks but they've done it in a really clever way very clean way i like how it was done and i think if anything also it kind of jumps upon the trend of people i feel like i feel like twitter's instagram's turned in a lot like like a blog now it's become a lot like blogger where people are having like debates in the comments like going back and forth like someone will post like a topic and then, of course, because on Instagram, there's no links, right? So you can't really link out to another t article. So you just sort of kind of try and surmise the article you're talking about in your little box. Then people kind of comment on it in the comments, in the replies. So I feel like Twitter, Instagram, sorry, I keep saying Twitter, has done a really good thing in terms of jumping on that because there's a lot of conversation that happens on Instagram that doesn't really get out to places because people don't really look at the comments as much as probably I do. Because I love looking at the comments and stories and seeing what people are saying and shit, engaging the temperature. Um, yes, Yes and Tashki is a separate app. That's what, that's what I'm going to jump on just now. The only thing I'd say is a little bit iffy about it, it doesn't really work, is the requirement for it to be a separate app. That's the only thing that's weird in my regard. I think having to download a completely separate app, as you can see there, it's a little app that you got there, is strange. There's no like tab that you can kind of flick over onto your main Instagram that does it. Don't get me wrong, the sign up process is really good and very clean. Very, very good and very clean. Um, so very clean, very easy, whatever, you know, in terms of using it. You don't have to do crazy shit. You're not there having to take a picture of yourself and whatever, take a picture of your passport. It's very easy to kind of use it and it kind of links to your already Instagram profile you already have. So you have to, and you basically have to have an Instagram profile to have a Fred's profile, which is a little bit annoying in itself because I thought I would be able to get a Fred's um, profile URL that wasn't mine, like a different one. But I have to set up another Instagram profile. Do you know what I mean? That's the thing that kind of got you in a bit of a walled garden in that regards. But the process is easy to sign up. And obviously the, you know, is it the UI, UX? I think it's called user interface. Or the, you know, let's just say UX. UX, I think, is user design. is really nice. And I guess the UX is, is, is the user interface or US or whatever is really nice also. UX and UI is really decent on the app itself. So I don't really mind it overall. So let's quickly read the article here. Um, courtesy of Meta. 
It says, um, da, 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 da. Mark Zuckerberg has announced the initial version of Threads, an app built by Instagram team for sharing with text. Whether you're a creator or a casual poster, Threads offers a new separate space for real-time updates and public conversations. We're working towards making Threads compatible with the open, interplorable social networks that we believe can shape the future of the internet. Oh, actually, I take that back. I take that back. This might not be what I'm seeing in the comments because there's definitely a... Because I follow a lot of like you know, techno pages, a lot of fashion pages, a lot of streetwear pages, a lot of sneaker pages. And there's obviously a lot of debate around shit, right? When stuff is dropping, I don't like this design. That thing is crap. That is good. Why did this person get a collab? Why is this person playing here? All that sort of debate happens in the comments quite often, right? Cool. But I've noticed with myself in my own Instagram, I use Instagram mostly for the stories. And when I'm posting on stories, Either I'm kind of spam posting pictures and using it like a like a Tumblr, uploading stuff I find online and memes and shit, or I'm like taking a picture and then like writing some text, like a commentary or something. Oh, this and shit happened, blah blah blah, right? And usually people will heart in a DM reply, but that's what I'm usually kind of doing. So maybe Instagram has noticed people do that a lot, and they said, hey, rather than put it on your stories. We want more engagement on the feed. So we're going to give you a separate app where you can kind of get your thoughts off via the threads, via the kind of text-based kind of platform. That makes a lot more sense. I kind of get that now. It continues. Instagram, where billions of people around the world connect up before the video. Our vision with threads is to take what Instagram does best and expand it to text, creating positive, creative space to express your ideas, just like on Instagram. With threads, you can follow and connect with friends and creators who share your interests, including people you follow on Instagram and beyond. And you can use your existing suite of safety and user controls. Join the conversation, it says here. You can see how, what it looks like. You see what someone's profile looks like on there. Basically similar to your Instagram profile, um, but just a little bit more cleaned up, um, a little bit more stripped back. Um, obviously, you see how people are replying here on the threads with the little replies on each comment, which is pretty decent on there. Um, everyone who's under 16 will be defaulted to private profile, which is pretty nice in terms of safety. Um, turn out the noise. We built threads with tools to enable positive, productive conversations. You can control who can mention you or reply to you within your threads. Lovely. N nice. Feels like fucking Russia. Um, like on Instagram, you can add hidden words to filter out replies on your threads that contain specific words. You can unfollow, block, restrict, or report a profile on threads by tapping the free dot menu and any accounts you've blocked on Instagram automatically blocked on threads. So perfect, right? If you're coming from that side of things. As of all our products, we're taking safety seriously and we'll enforce community guidelines in the content interaction on, on the app. Since 2016, we invested more than 16 billion in building up teams and technologies needed to protect our users. 16 billion to protect users. God damn it. Compatible with interplorable networks, activity power, blah, blah, blah. But you get the gist. One thing I've noticed with this, right, is that it's not an Instagram killer. Have you noticed that? I think we've reached a stage in social media platforms or in apps in general where wherever you're on, you're on. If you're on TikTok, you're on TikTok. If you're on Instagram, you're on Instagram. But you're not going to suddenly ditch one for another. Like, I think the people that are on TikTok now were never going to be long-term Instagram users. They were always looking for, like, a TikTok-y type platform because if you go on TikTok and see some of the trending stuff on there, the content is very special. And I say that in the most kindest way possible, I can say, right? It's a very special type of person that makes native content for TikTok, right? Cool. That person you are never going to find on Instagram. You may have found them on Facebook or whatever, or you may have found them on some random forum, but they needed that app. So I feel like nowadays, people are going to be more drawn to the apps that they want to be drawn to, but you're not really going to get what we had before where certain apps were knocking other apps off their perch. That's not a thing. Either you're for the app or you're not. The people that are on like Blue Sky or Reason, all these other fucking apps, they're going to be on there, or like Truth Social, they're obviously always going to be on there. The same goes for people who stream on like Rumble and Kick and shit. They're always going to be those type of guys. So that the era of like, oh, this is a something killer, is completely gone. Whatever you like, you like, and you're just going to stick with it for the most part. For me, I downloaded it. I grabbed my fucking account and shit, but I haven't interacted with it since I downloaded it. I don't really give a fuck, to be honest. And most likely, I'll probably end up deleting it from my phone until they end up figuring out a way to integrate threads with Instagram. Like how... um. 
Uber, Uber did with Uber Eats. There was a period in time where you had to download separate apps. But now, if I'm not mistaken, through the Uber app, you can have Uber Eats also. And I think vice versa. So that obviously is something that a lot of people would kind of prefer as opposed to having two separate apps on your phone, taking up storage, data, privacy information, blah de blah 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 But um, so far, so good. I still would say my long-term bet is still going to be on Elon. I feel like Elon is still going to figure out Twitter because I feel like Twitter, for the most part, people don't give Twitter enough praise because Twitter, for the most part, especially under Jack Dorsey's tutelage or leadership, was very much a platform where they tended to kind of skew a certain political direction, right? Um, they had a particular sort of worldview. If you didn't kind of link towards it, you kind of got you know taken down and deleted very, very quickly. Ban, block, shadow ban, whatever it may be. And it survived and thrived in that era. People were annoyed by it, but you kind of worked around the issues. And I feel like now, because it's the wild, wild west, and maybe it kind of skews another way politically, it's still surviving. So I think Twitter kind of survives despite all the censorship, all the left-leaning stuff, all the right-leaning stuff, all the nonsense, all the porn. It just always ends up kind of chugging along. And I just think because Elon, you know, had to pay over the nose for it, he's going to try and make it work. I feel like if you would have got a bargain for it, you would have treated it like his plaything. Like maybe like he treats the boring company and just did whatever he wanted to do with it. But because he paid so much for it and people would, you know, people way smarter than I am say he overpaid for it with it paying, I think, 44 billion for the app. I think he's going to try and make it work. And I'm definitely going to say, I think long term, Twitter will still be here. The same way Snapchat is still, still here. There are kids who use Snapchat who don't use TikTok. That's the thing. So I think people really underestimate the power or the kind of um, loyalty that some people have to their apps. I don't think it's as easy to kind of perch, jump somebody off of their perch or something, you know, or push somebody off their perch. It's not that easy. It was maybe in the past, personally speaking. But again, that's me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just a random guy on the internet talking out of my bubbly ass.